but I have a video series going on right now, a video tutorial series, actually two. One is the Knit Basics series and one is the Crochet Basics. Uh, basic? No, Basic Knits and Basic Crochet. I don't even know the name of my own series. <laughs> Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to the 31st episode of the Love and Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, September 10th, 2019, and it is actually a, a relatively mild day here in Texas. Um, looking outside now, a few minutes ago it looked like rain, but now it's looking really sunny. Um, it's only like in the low 90s, I think like 93, so... That's not too bad, but I was super warm when I got home. I had to do outdoor car line, so I have on my tank top and my athletic shorts, and I am ready, if um, weather permitting, if it doesn't rain, to go on a walk sometime later in the evening when it cools down. So I just had to get out of my work clothes. Couldn't do it anymore. Um, but let's just dive right into um, whips because I don't have any finished objects this week. Um, I'm also having a little bit of trouble with my eyes right now. Um, they are just being really sensitive and hard to focus and the lights for some reason are kind of bothering me today. So if I'm looking more like squinty or not looking at the camera, that's why they are just bothering me. I'm going to go to the eye doctor um, soon, as soon as I can find one because surprise my insurance changed i didn't even know it and my i called and made an appointment with the eye doctor i've had for two years and they were like sure and they made my appointment and then they called me back about an hour later and said um did you know you have new insurance and now we're out of network I'm like no <laughs> thanks for checking anyway uh insurance um but anyway so hopefully soon i will find a new eye doctor and they will help me with my eyesight um, okay, so I had this half finished object last week. I have not done a single thing to it. Um, it is so much brighter than it is showing on the screen. Um, that's a little bit better. So this main color is Lolo Did It and the colorway is, oh shoot, why am I forgetting? Can't remember can't. <laughs> this is a different yarn. It is not Lolo Did It, but it matches the green really well and looks super bright. So these are just little like crew socks, I guess. And I am so close to finishing the second one. I believe I was about here in the leg last week. Um, maybe, actually, maybe I was up here. I really don't remember because my stitch marker got moved. I don't know if I moved it or it was like some form of magic, but it was way up here. And I know I wasn't way up there last week. Um, I was showing some of my some of my previous students who are middle schoolers now, um, walked across the street from their middle school and came to my school and said hi to me in the morning when I was working on this. And they were looking at it, so they might have moved it. I don't I don't know. Um, but anyway, I am so close to being done. I've done. I did the heel while I was at a professional development last Friday, and then I did a decent amount of the foot at a, a SMU football game, even though it was so hot. And I've been working on the rest of the foot just in the mornings during my morning duty. So I've got oh, 50 rounds and I need 65 for my foot, and then I'll do the toe. So that'll definitely, definitely be done next week. Um, Man, I wish I could remember the name. I'll have it on the bottom of the screen, but I love this yarn from Lola Did It. I totally, and I think I've said it before, would wear a sweater out of it because I love bright colors. I mean, look at my nails. <laughs> All right, so that is one whip. And then, sorry, that was probably really loud on the floor. I actually have been working on my Like a Cloud cardigan. Um, I brought it with me on Saturday to my knit group and I'm in the middle of a row, of course. I haven't had much time during lunch uh, in the past two days, so I think I did like half a row today. Um, but here is my Like a Cloud cardigan. You can see it's starting to get longer and more cardigan-like. Um, this is not where I was. That's marking the last um, 
row of before I split. I have done, there we go. I have my really cute monster book of monsters from Simply Serving. Um, marking my spot and so I've actually done a few inches this week which is the most progress I have done in ages um, but this is a cardigan it's going to be long sleeved and it is by Hohi Locatelli and it is called um, Like a Cloud. I am using the recommended Shibui yarns. One's a mohair silk and one is a lace weight and I believe the mohair silk is called Silk Cloud and the lace weight is called Sima, C-I-M-A. And the colorways I think are like tar and graphite or something. I did not bring my labels over here, even though they're like right around the corner. <laughs> I forgot them this week. Um, it's been uh, really busy. Um, it's always busy, right? It's always busy, but I've been working really, really hard at work lately. And um, as silly as that is to say, it's making it hard to work hard at home. Um, I think it's just the beginning of the year where everything is new and establishing routines. Then once that becomes routine, I can put more brain power into knitting and stuff. <laughs> but it can, you just can't do it all 100% all the time. So that is like a cloud. I am super duper enjoying working on that. I think I'm like, two inches away from starting the body ribbing, which is like, I have to do four inch of, inches of ribbing, so that's gonna take a little while, but I've been enjoying taking that around with me. Um, I brought it on Saturday morning to the Texas Yarn Lovers event and worked on it for a couple hours, and that was really nice. Um, then I started a new project. So I am re, um, not really revamping, I'm adding to my Fall Means Football Collection. So one item in that Fall Means Football Collection is a bottle cozy or koozie, however you like to say it. I don't have a bottle that I felt was appropriate to show. Um, and so therefore I'm just showing you the cozy right now. Um, but this is a, a pattern that is already available. Um, it's called Classic Bottle Cozy and it's part of my Fall Means Football Collection. So the idea is that if you wanted to, you could make this in um, two of your team's colors, if it's a football team or hockey team or whatever. I've also seen people do a third color in these tiny stripes if your team um, is better known by three colors. Um, you could also, of course, just do something fun like I did here. I think this is Woolen Boon Purple Drank, <laughs> which again is not very appropriate, but it's a really fun color. And so I made this one for myself and it just, the bottle can slip in um, through the top. It is just stretchy enough. Um, and then the um, bottom rests on this so that you don't have to use like a coaster or anything. It's a koozie all the way around. So this is for glass bottles, but I am now working on one for cans. So that pattern has not been released yet, but I am working on it. So I'm making one here loosely in Dallas Cowboys colors. So this is the Can Cozy. It will look very similar, but of course it's fatter and shorter. Um, let me see if I can get my can in here that I've been using to make sure I'm doing it right. This might take a little while to tweak, but I think I'm onto it. So here we go. I just worked on this, I think for just one on Sunday evening for a little bit. So this will be the classic Can Cozy when it is done. This will be a new design um, and I will add it to the Fall Means Football Collection. Um, but you can see it's not, it's not a huge project. It's really good for uh, scraps. Or if you do buy specific colors, you can make several of them for your family members. Uh, like I said, this is loosely Ca Dallas Cowboys, which is for a family, um, friend that <laughs> loves the Cowboys. And so, yeah, I just have a little more to go. So maybe I'll work on that here in a little bit. Um, but the this will be called the Classic Can Cozy to go along with the Classic Bottle Cozies. And I can't wait to get that done. So if you are um, have been itching to be a test knitter, that will be something that I'll put on Instagram um, very soon. I'm hoping for next week, but I can't make any promises because I, there's another design that I'm working on as well. So those are the whips um, that I have put a lot of focus into. I also have a shawl design I'm working on that's not ready to show. It won't, it won't be for a while, um, but it's still in the swatching stages as it was last week. 
seems to be a long stage because I have to do a lot of conceptual thinking and it's not always easy to do that after a day at work and then weekends have been jam-packed full. So hopefully I will get to work on it a little more um, this week. Okay, so now I think we will do the ask me section. So my ask me thread is um, on Ravelry in the Love and Stitches group and it is looking pretty bare. Um, so if you have any questions, um, feel free to go over. You can ask me knitting or crochet related questions or just questions in general, and I will answer them here on the podcast. So the one I'm gonna answer this week is from, I think it's K.E. Mahler, it's from um, Kristen, and I need to pull up my computer. So hang on one second, I thought I had it ready. <laughs> okay, so here is Kristen's question. She said, hi Natalie, first thank you for the sock tutorial videos, they are awesome. One question is, do you ever knit socks on nine inch needles? Why or why not? So um, socks are a small circumference and so they can be knit in many different ways. You can use magic loop, which is my current preferred method. You can use two circular needles. You could use a nine inch circular needle. You could use double points. I mean, so many different ways to make a small circumference item. So I learned to make socks on double pointed needles. Um, that was before the short row, like heel craze kind of went out. And so I think traditionally socks were knit on double pointed needles. And then of course, to do the construction of a heel flap and gusset, um, double pointed needles make it really easy to keep sections separated. So it was a good way to teach people. And this was, um, Oh, I don't remember. I think I was 16, maybe 14. I don't remember when I learned to knit socks, but this has been 10 plus years. And um, I don't remember when I stopped knitting socks on double pointed needles, but I believe the next thing I picked up was Magic Loop. And I still knit socks on Magic Loop, but I actually did go through a nine inch circular phase. So I first saw nine inch circulars. They're these little, they're so little itty bitty um, circular needles on the Yarn Hoarder podcast. If you um, aren't familiar, Amber is a an amazing podcaster. She doesn't put them out um, very often, maybe once a month, and they're always super long and very enjoyable. It's one of my favorites. Um, so Amber is the Yarn Hoarder. I'll put it below. Um, but I saw her knitting on, knitting her socks on nine inch circulars and it just looked like so efficient, I guess, because you're not dealing with um, extra needles like double point. You're not um, dealing with the rearranging of stitches like Magic Loop. And I thought I wanted to try it. So I ordered, I think I ordered some or bought some. Um, I did end up with quite a few Chai Goo pairs, which is my favorite brand for sock needles. And for about a year, I was knitting on nine inch circular needles. Now I didn't start my socks on the nine inches. I would still cast on either, if it was toe up, I would do the entire toe on Magic Loop before I switched to circular, nine inch circulars. Um, if it was cuffed down, I would do the cast on and maybe a row and then switch to nine inch circular needles because for me, it was like impossible to just start on the nine inch circular needle. You totally could cuff down. I don't know how you could toe up. I think you would have to have another method. Um, but I really liked doing it, but I started to get a pain here in my forearm. And I, and, um, I started to notice that it kind of was consistent with my use of nine inch circular needles. This is not going to be the case for everybody just because none of us hold our knitting needles the same way. Um, you do kind of have to hold the nine inch circulars like very delicately. <laughs> um, and for me, it just, it wasn't working. Um, I noticed for, for whatever reason, I think I did a pattern sock and um, I wanted to use circular or magic loop for that because it's, I think it's a little bit harder to do a pattern on those nine inch needles when everything is kind of squished up and it, it was harder for me to purl. It was a lot easier to just 
knit around on those circular needles. Um, so I did a pattern sock on Magic Loop and realized that I didn't have that pain. And so that's when I decided, you know what, I think I need to switch back to Magic Loop. And I am happy that I have um, that even just um, 16 inch circular knitting, it, the needle I think is just too short for the way that I knit and it gives me a pain here. And so I would rather do the method that, um, it really isn't that much more finicky, um, but I'd rather do that and not have the injury um, than do something that's more convenient. Um, and this is not gonna be the same for everybody. So I think you should definitely try out a pair of nine inch circular needles. You need to give them a try for a while before you can decide, I think, if you like them, because um, they are really weird at first. Um, but an alternate to that, I forgot, there's another method um, that's been popular as of late, the Addy Flexi Flips um, are, I think you have three short needles with a flexible center, like a cord in the center. Um, and that seems to be better for some people than the nine inch needles. So, so many methods to try, just start with one and see, see if you like it. Um, but that, I think that answers why I originally went to nine inch needles and why I stopped using them as well. Um, but you might be different. You might really enjoy them and they might actually be better for the way that you knit. Um, okay, Kristen had a second question. She said, will you be adding to your sock tutorial videos? I know you have some awesome tips on working with self-striping yarn. So I was hoping that would be something you would do in the future since your other tutorial videos are so well put together. I watched the tips on your Instagram stories but didn't think of writing them down. Can't wait to catch episode 30 later today. Yeah, okay, perfect. So um, I, yes, and yes, I'm planning to add to the sock tutorial videos. I have a list of tutorials written down or in, in a Google sheet and um, talking about self-striping is one of them. Um, so if you ever have ideas for tutorials, just throw them my way and some of them will stick with me and some of them I write down and they turn into something else. <laughs> like I might write self-striping, but then I start talking about like how to wind self-striping and how to put your socks together. And so, yeah, I think, I think that's coming sometime in the future. Um, self-striping yarn is, has to be managed and um, <laughs> there's a lot of little things you can do to help prevent having to like cut and stuff. So I think that that'll be something that I can do in the future. I have it written, put down in my Google doc. Um, so yes, look for that, but probably not for just a little bit. Um, as far as adding other elements to my sock tutorial videos, um, and this is not a question that Kristen asked, but I'm toying with putting in um, possibly, maybe, adding more elements to it, like different heels. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know yet because I don't want to be, I don't want to take anyone else's like intellectual property. So I want to make sure that I'm, I'm finding heels that are just like generically known and not copying somebody's work and then putting it out there. So um, maybe in the future, I do have plans for a sock pattern um, that kind of encompasses like all of that knowledge. So it's gonna take a while and um, it's not gonna be ready for several months. I do know that. Um, so get your questions in there. Um, right now, I think we are um, out of questions. So if we don't have any questions, that's totally fine. But if we do, I'm happy to answer them here on the podcast. And last week I was answering some questions about socks and I said, if you wanna put your input in, you can go into that thread and, and reply. And somebody did, her username is maybe Woo -ee, woo -ee? <laughs> I don't know. It's W-O-O-W-I-I. -I. And she took um, a lot of time to very carefully answer um, some sock questions about like the yarn that she uses for socks and how she um, organizes them and how she reinforces and repairs socks. So if that's something you're interested in, you should go read that. It's in the Ask Me thread. Um, it is post 14. And just um, thank you so much for taking the time to help answer that question. It's uh, Her name is Laura. 
Um, but she says she's a sockaholic and feel free to message her if she can clarify anything. And I think that is awesome. So if you have questions about um, what we were talking about last week and, um, okay, so that was really weird. <laughs> For the first time ever, my video just stopped recording and shut down out of the camera app. I'm using my phone. Um, I think maybe my storage was just full. I always try to delete videos once they're uploaded to YouTube and I hadn't yet gone to the deleted photos in my phone and actually erased them from my device. So fingers crossed that was a problem. Luckily I did not lose any video. It just kind of cut me off when I was talking about the sock thread. So that was all I wanted to say about that. Definitely go over to Ravelry and check that out if you are interested. Okay, so I bought some yarn this weekend. It's right up here. I am super excited. I'm doing a lot of fantasy knitting in my head because I have um, designs and stuff that I am working on and I love, like I would not be designing if I didn't love it but I also want to like just knit sometimes. And so I'm really excited for Stephen West's uh, mystery knit along. It is called Starflake and it is gonna start in October, I believe like the first weekend or so. And so I was in McKinney um, at McKinney Knittery last Saturday. And so I went to get my yarn. Of course, like none of this was gonna work. <laughs> so I had to get some new yarn. So you need two colors and they need to be contrasting colors and you need two skeins of each. So I ended up with this fingering weight um, twist light from Madeline Tosh. And I had got um, the colorway Dirty Panther and as ever, these are my two colors. So I am excited to see, I have no idea, it's a shawl, but no idea what it's gonna look like. Um, just that it's going to be very um, graphic, I think he said, and contrasting. So I am super excited. I had also, I had picked out this color like as a favorite um, and I had a, a gold with it. Um, I don't think I have any gold that represents it back here, but I had a gold with it and it was so pretty, but I was worried if we did end up doing anything remotely close to color work that it wouldn't show up. So I chose the most contrasting thing I could and I think that I am going to like it. So I am gonna wait until a little closer to get those wound up, but I am definitely excited. The, this cube right here is all um, yarn that has plans right now. I can always change it, of course, but um, yeah, yarns that are paired together. Most of them are tied together with ribbons. So yeah, lots of plans right there. <laughs> um, okay, so I have a couple announcements and then I have a shawl cuff to give away and I need to go grab it. So, um, <laughs> oops, I was not prepared today, was I? Um, but I have a video series going on right now, a video tutorial series, actually two. One is the Knit Basics series and one is the Crochet Basics. Uh, basic? No, Basic Knits and Basic Crochet. I don't even know the name of my own series. Um, but those are um, just kind of have barely started. Um, each of them starts with the Slipknot video and then the crochet one branches out into, um, I've got four videos uh, in addition to Slipknot right now. I have the chain stitch right and left-handed and then single crochet right and left-handed just came out today. Um, and then the knitting videos also branch out from Slipknot. I've got long tail cast on and then I have um, the knits, no, I'm sorry, long tail cast on and then I have the knit stitch um, continental knitting, which is holding the yarn in your left hand and English knitting, holding the yarn in your right hand. So um, a lot of videos came out today, four videos, and I'm hoping if I can keep the same pace, which I am not entirely sure that I can, it might have to slow down a little bit, but I am hoping next week to have the next step in both of those series. So for knitting, that would mean pearl, um, continental and pearl English. And in those knitting videos, you're going to see um, both straight and circular needles. And then I'm hoping to have half double crochet right-handed and half double crochet left-handed for those crochet videos. So we'll see, hopefully I can get those recorded and ready for you guys. Um, and I know if you're watching here, you're probably not um, 
new to knitting or crochet, but maybe you're new to one or the other. So that might be a good place to check out um, if you're wanting to learn the other craft. Um, I am trying to think of ways to kind of like advertise or put these videos out there for people who are in that audience where they need to learn um, how to knit or crochet. So I have started to explore Pinterest a little bit and I'm trying to make pins. <laughs> It's not so great, um, but I am really trying and experimenting right now before I put a lot of pressure on myself to like keep up every time I do a video and make a pin <laughs> for it. Um, I'm gonna have an, two more videos come out this week actually. Um, another one coming out tomorrow, so it will be out when you see this, is alternating yarns at the I-Cord Edge. So my newest design, Louisiana Street, has an I-Cord Edging and there is a section where you will use two colors of yarn and you will alternate them. So um, it's just one method of how to alternate. And um, so that video will be out. It's really short if you just wanna sneak a peek at that and make sure um, maybe you can use it on a different pattern or um, if you're gonna knit Louisiana Street, you'll have those basics covered. And then um, finally, my love letter to the Louisiana Street shawl will be up on Friday. Um, when the pattern releases, but I will get back to that in just a second. So I have a shawl cuff to give away. Let me go grab the one for the giveaway. Okay, so I have pulled a winner from last week's episode, episode 30, um, to give away this shawl cuff. So this is the crisp, brand new, never been put on a shawl one that I'm trying very hard to keep nice. Um, but this was provided by Stephanie at the Rusted Stitch. And it's the same one that I showed last week on my Louisiana Street shawl, but mine is actually now at McKinney Knittery on the shawl, um, ready for the North Texas yarn crawl to start on Friday. Um, so I have this one here. This is the one that you will be getting. Um, so I randomly chose a winner from the comments last week. I think we had, so I'm a little confused because I think it said like a hundred and something comments, but I don't know if that counts me commenting back to you, I don't know for sure, um, but I think it might not. I, I really don't know. I didn't go through <laughs> every single one to see, but I did randomly choose a winner. And the winner of the cuff is Bridget Shamrock. Um, Bridget, if you will just email me to let me know that you saw this, and my email is nittynatty at gmail.com, and I will get this beautiful shawl cuff from the rest of Stitch out to you very, very soon. Okay, so Louisiana Street is coming out on Friday. I have my mock-up here to show you, but not my final version. Um, so if you wanna see it, um, definitely you can go look at last week's podcast, episode 30, or you can wait for my love letter to come out on Friday and I'll show you, I'll tell you the story, I'll talk your ear off about this shawl. Um, but this is a, a right or asymmetrical or right triangle um, shawl. It's got garter stitch, it's got texture. This one is in very contrasting colors, but you'll see my, um, my final version is in much more subtle colors. So this section is very subtle. Um, this is the alternating yarns at the I-cord edge that the video tutorial is going to show. So if you're ever working a pattern where you need to do that, that might help you. Um, blah, blah, excuse me. So yeah, it's just a cute little triangular um, shawl, knitted of course, and it is fingering weight, two skeins. I used a size six, but you might need to go up a little bit. Some of my testers had to go up to a seven um, to meet the gauge, but that will be out on Friday. Um, so you can get that um, on Ravelry, or if you are not a Ravelry user, you can just um, send me an email. Right now, Ravelry is the only platform I'm using um, to sell my patterns, um, but I do have plans to have a couple other options for you guys. So I think that's it. Yes, as far as announcements go. Um, so let's just talk about a couple life things real quick. Um, Toaster is like waiting at the door. He just ate his, <laughs> he just ate his um, breakfast. He typically waits until I get home to eat his breakfast and I don't get home till at least five o'clock every day. <laughs> He's so ridiculous. Um, but life stuff, let's see. So we have, we got a new TV, <laughs> which is very exciting because 
Um, our other TV is just getting moved to a different room. Um, we actually were kind of like short a TV when we moved into this house, which is silly because we have, I mean, the number of TVs we have is just ridiculous. Um, one like in every room, um, but we were in need uh, to replace the one that was supposed to go in our living room because it got broken um, when it was moved by the movers. So um, we finally got one. And what was funny is we have a picture of our other TV. I, I don't think I have it still, but our other TV was sitting up on the TV stand and the TV we were getting was sitting in front of the TV stand. And this TV is like the length of the TV stand. So when we first put it up, it looked ridiculous. <laughs> it's so big. It was hilarious, but I'm really excited because now it is, it, it's very clear that this is the room that we watch television in. It's also in our kitchen, which is nice. So when I'm, you know, doing dishes and stuff, I can see the TV. Um, but that's, that's exciting for us, right? <laughs> and then we also decorated for Halloween this week. We were going to decorate on Labor Day weekend, but, um, we just got tired and so we waited until this weekend which you're gonna say waited isn't that really early for halloween kind of but disney world decorated in august so we kind of follow their schedule um my husband's favorite holiday is halloween and his enthusiasm is contagious so we wanted to enjoy our decorations for as long as we could so we thought We'll decorate in September and then we'll enjoy them for two months. So most of the stuff is in the living room so that we can see it. The um, pumpkins are like lining the TV, which is the only shelving we really have. We just don't have many places to put things. There's a couple things down in the room where I'm in, um, just little artsy like wooden things. And um, I have a kitchen mat. <laughs> I think it says Happy Halloween. <laughs> anyway, it's really cute. Um, and it makes um, him smile, so it makes me smile. Um, probably there will be a gap between Halloween and Christmas because we typically don't decorate for Christmas until Thanksgiving. So we'll see. I can't do Christmas that early. I love Christmas, but no. <laughs> nope. Um, but I think that's really it. Um, just trying to stay on top of all of my different roles in life and learning that it's not possible to be 100% at everything. So um, like I said, my focus right now has been my uh, job, which I think is a good thing. Um, and once that becomes more automatic, I will have more time and focus to do the things that I am like bursting in with just dreams of things that I want to accomplish for love and stitches. So i um, hoping some of that creative energy will be put into good use here soon and just stay on the lookout for more stuff from me. But that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.